record it to the cloud, it'd be great. Then I can download it. Okay, awesome. Awesome, everyone's jumping on now. So welcome to Monday night, 19th of August. Isn't it just insane how fast the year is flying by us all? Um, it's great to be here. I'm so excited. I'm about to get on a plane tomorrow and go and work in the southern Queensland coast. Um, so we've got a whole heap of market parties and RRPs. Uh, if you don't know about them, you want to get onto them. Um, I want to welcome Julie, Julie uh, Shepstone. She's um, a new brand partner with us. So welcome, welcome. If there's any other new brand partners, please sing out and let us know and welcome them onto the call. Um, I want to just quickly get into the Zoom tonight to the training because um, it's 25 minute uh, training that I've got hold of from Paul Wyatt. Uh, he's for you guys that don't know who Paul is, Paul and Samantha are the number one income earners in the company. Um, they're incredible at what they do. They're really looking at a couple of things that um, we have spoken about in the last couple of weeks. One is, um, is a recruiting and the other is really going to um, sharpen that axe in, uh, in retention of the PCs that we actually have. Uh, because what is really amazing is that the work that is done in actually bringing on PCs, that we don't just want to bring on PCs each month and every single month just quick more PCs. It's we want to bring on PCs and give them a good experience so then we have retention. Um, and, uh, and I think about that as as far as our... Um, in our core values of go slow to go fast. And when you think about go slow to go fast, there's two options in this as far as with PCs. We can just bring on a whole heap of PCs and just be like PC and rolling machines, or we can bring on a PC and we can actually share with them and help them through their first um, experience over the first 90 days of, um, of using our products so they can get a good experience, making sure they have good before and after photos. Um, Kel did a great training on that a couple of weeks ago. If you guys haven't seen that, you want to watch the recording of it because it's fantastic. Um, you want to make sure that all these little parts are in motion so they have a great experience because we know that if people use this product for that 90 days, they then can understand how the product works because our product is unique um, so I am going to zoom straight over to Paul uh, so get a pen and paper out because you definitely want to be taking notes um, and we will chat on the other side so Michelle if you can just um, mute uh, Cheryl for me it would be great and I will just share my screen and my screen over, hang on a sec. Okay, has everyone got my screen? Give me a thumbs up. Maria, I can see you. Can you give me a thumbs up? Can you see my screen? Michelle Jaya, can you see my screen? 411 on customers in black. Yep, awesome. Okay, now let's go. Okay. All right, welcome. If you are watching this uh, training video, you're in for a treat. In this video, we're really trying to um, showcase and share some tips, some verbiage, some skills that can help you in, in, in managing your customer base and maintaining a great customer base and building a great business and keeping your customers happy and ongoing. And we have three special guests that are on this call for absolute reason because they do this month in and month out. And they come from different ranks, different time frames in this business. Uh, you know, Karen's up in the Long Island area, um, you know, seven, six, seven months in this business as a premier director. Um, and, you know, month after month, 
you can be for hire, which is consistent with everyone. Let's call it. And then you have Nicole in Iowa, been in this business for you know uh, 18 months, premier director, and massive amounts of peak, could be 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 uh, a month. And you also have Beth Shapiro, you know, NMD, and and in, in, in investment in the business for you know three plus years. And to me, you know, the longer you are your business to mature in, in, in this industry, um, it's even bigger of a feat of keeping that customer base happy. And Beth has always had 3,000, um, you know, peak QB, um, you know, month after month, year after year, which is just a huge um, feather to put in our cap. So you've got three incredible people that are going to, you know, share some tips with you guys on how, and how they manage their customer base, right? What they're doing from verbiage to, um, organization um, to connect communication and I want to touch on um, some of that with all of them so you guys can take notes so if you're watching this you don't have a, a pencil and a, and a paper I would totally get one um, and take the notes because really the difference between where you are in terms of watching this and where they uh, where they are in terms of how they're managing their customer base how they built it how they maintained it, maintained it it's a lot of it's just simple things, of a little bit better of a system of organization, maybe how they're communicating or what they're saying in the verbiage and language that you're using. So you're going to be able to see firsthand from them. And hopefully you'll notice some of the differences that you have and can adjust, change those differences and start building not only a great customer base, but keeping that customer base, just working smarter versus harder. So to start things off, the first question I want to ask is just, I, I think, Obviously, having the size, um, volume of customers that you guys have, right? You're talking dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of customers, right? Um, you know, probably 50 to 100 or more in some cases. Um, how do you organize that? And I guess I'll first throw that to you, Karen. How do you organize your customers on a monthly basis without your head blowing off? Um, I, um have an, a day-by-day -day planner agenda and that's really been better for me. I was trying to do it in my phone with reminders or by checking the PC report and that wasn't enough. So now when you go to the back office and you do a my PC report, if you look over on the right hand side above the box that prints all your PCs, there's a little tiny arrow and if you click on the arrow you can send it all to Excel. So I send it to Excel and I print it and then I go through and I go in my agenda Neora sends an email seven days before their ADO is going to ship. So I always try to beat that email. So I put everybody in for eight to 10 days before, and I try to chunk it into like three or four weeks, sometimes twice a week, but I don't do it like the 17th are those people, the 18th are those people. Then that, Cause I'm spending every day frantically running back and forth between my agenda. So I chunk it in a reasonable amount of time. So everyone's getting a follow up eight to 11 days or so and then I adjust my verbiage on based on what type of customer they are but I check in with them that way and I go into my agenda and I also give them a dead date in my agenda to make sure I know like there's a list of people at the top that if they haven't answered me I need to go in and I need to delay them and I was telling Paul I have a ghosted me list and a didn't need it early in the month list and I keep those around the 24th of the month. So if I need volume at the end of the month, those are the lists I'm going back to. So the ghosted me list is like, oh, what a crazy summer. I'm sure we're so busy. Like, you know, I, I can really forgot to follow up with some people too, but I didn't hear from you in the beginning of the month and I just wanted to make sure you don't have an empty bottle. And So, you, so you're saying you have people that ghost you too? Everybody. <laughs> I make sure that you know yeah. for anybody watching, yeah. it's not just you, right? Even no, the top people, the ghost you find more ghosts. <laughs> need early in the month list because they might be getting empty, and especially those didn't need people. I write ten percent next to them if they ordered last month because I'll hit them up around the twenty fifth to the twenty seventh of the month, and I'll remind them that their ten percent off is going to expire. Um, did they want to use that? So that's awesome. to be the different ways. Beth and Karen, I, I mean, obviously, I think with the size customer base you have, without having some sort of organizational system, it would be just it would be all over the place, right? 
And uh, so Beth, you also have a very big customer base too, and you've maintained a customer base now, like I said, talking three years. What, what do you do to keep it all organized? Um, well, it's funny that because I'm not as organized probably as Karen. <laughs> um, I just know my customers very well. Like I take the time to, like, I do make my list at the beginning of the month and I look at it and I see who's going to process when. And so I kind of know in the beginning of the month who I've got to reach out to. And so I look at each person, I look at what they've ordered last month um, and what they could need this month so that I have an idea of something that I want to suggest to them. Um, but I also, um, I, I just know them well. So there are people, when I need volume at the end of the month, I know there's people only order every three or four months when I'm like, oh, it's been three or four months. I know they're, they're going to be needing something. And so I'll reach out to them. I think it really pays to build that relationship because then you, you can go through each one. And I do. I mean, I print out the list and I go through each person, even if they haven't ordered in six months or so. Um, and so, I, I'm going to approach them. And so elaborate on that. So <laughs> you're talking about having a great relationship with them. So when it comes to communicating with your customers, what do you tend to lean towards? Is it different depending on the customers? Does it help build the relationship? Talk to me a little bit about your, your style of communication. Well, it's really important to me before they order something. Um, it was probably the most uncomfortable thing I, I ever didn't want to do in the beginning. Like texting, I, was, I could hide behind my text. But I realized that when I can get them on the phone and they can hear my voice and I can explain things to them, that they feel closer to me. And so I can hear the kind of personality they have. I can hear if they are excited and ready to try it, or I can hear if they're skeptical. And I, and I know how to handle them that way. And so I think for me, that's been a big plus in my business in the last year or so, um, that I've, I've gotten out of my own way and gotten them on the phone. Um, that's just, and I can talk to each one differently because of that. Got it. Nicole, I, I want you to hear your input too on that in terms of what, what's that, what forms of communication are you using for your customers and is there specific situations where you may do something versus another form of communication? A lot of the younger customers are on Facebook, you know, most daily pretty much. So I private message them. I know, I like that, I know them personally, you know, I know their story, I know what they're, you know, how they like to approach. A lot of older people like to talk on the phone. And again, like Beth, that made me uncomfortable because I, in the last 10 years, I didn't write text. You know, that's just kind of where we've gone. But you, you know, they understand a lot more and are more interested when they hear it from you, they hear your voice. So I do phone, text message, and messages on Facebook. And, and, and then some people, it has to be in person. Interesting. Awesome. And I'm sure, obviously, in person, you're able to, you know, go even deeper into those type of conversations and, and finding out more, maybe opportunities for them to try new products or business opportunities, too. Um, you know, I think it's interesting that you both kind of bring up that the apprehension of picking up the phone and, and making a phone call versus texting. And I think that's common. I think probably people that are listening are probably going, I, I feel the same way, right? Um, but there's some depth to that type of communication. And there's, like you said, I think in both cases, there are certain people that that's just, that's what they're comfortable with, right? So sometimes we have to remember, it's not just about what we're comfortable with, it's about where we gotta service our customer base, part of that customer service. So Karen, any, anything that you do differently or unique that you wanna um, share into in terms of how you're communicating or how frequently you're talking to uh, your customer base? But it was actually Sam that said to me about using the little voice message where you can send a voice text to people. So sometimes just because people schedules don't match up or I might have a very short window like on the side of my kids' games or something, I might send 10 little voice texts to people. And it, those are more how I follow up, not to ask them if they're ordering, but just to, you know, did you get your package yet? Or how are you liking whatever the new thing they ordered last month? I try to make sure they hear my voice on those so they know that I'm excited about whatever it is that they have going on. So that's yeah. been a helpful little tool. I didn't realize that I could do that. The blend of high touch and high tech you guys are using and all, you know, it's, it's not one size fits all. And I think, you know, depending on people's schedule from what you guys are saying, the relationships you may have and just, you know, the generation of the, the potential customer that 
it, it's, it, you know, you, you may use a different form of communication that, that's fitting for them, right? So uh, I think obviously probably the biggest question that people want to know, um, especially and you guys are, are doing it incredibly well month after month because you guys have such high PQVs, big customer base, people always ordering, is really, you know, what are you doing either when you set the customer up from the very first time or when it comes to their second ADO, what, what are you doing to keep the customer to order that second time that also not only, you know, just throw in there that gives you the Nurium gives back and gives a customer a 10%, but what things are you doing? How are you saying it? Or what verbiage do you go to? Or maybe some tips you can share about keeping that customer and keeping them ordering the same product or different products, but just keep that ADO continue to run. Karen, why don't you, you tell me you start that off? Um, so I don't say that the first time they order because I tell them right away about the 10% loyalty bonus. And I don't, I don't always, oh, sorry, my dogs are barking. I don't always get into it in full detail, but I do set them up with the expectation that if they order again or when they order again, if it's in consecutive months, they get the 10% off. And when I contact them, I've always contacted them at least one time before I contact them about reordering to ask them if they like their new product and how it's going. Then when I contact them the second time, I tell them that their auto delivery option is coming up. I always call it an option instead of an order and that they have the 10% loyalty discount. And I tell them my most people line. Most people use that to get a backup item on the shelf so they don't get caught with an empty bottle or to try something new. Has anything caught your eye? Do you want me to set you up with a refill? And awesome. those seem to get a positive response. I love it. And, and, like, and just specific change of words can really change the perception of how someone's, you know, um, absorbing that information or that message. So I think that's I just want to, I want to add something. So when somebody orders for the first time, I make sure that they know that they need at least 90 days. So they don't think that they can just buy one bottle and everything, you know, be amazing and perfect. So it's going to take time. It's not instant. Even though some of our products, you know, give instant results, you want to do it the full 90 days to to see the full effect. That's a, that's a really interesting point, it's setting the right expectations for that, so to say, maybe trial period or using that product to really see this, the, the best results possible. I think uh, setting the right precedent early on probably minimizes people after 30 days just falling off. So they might think, if you're just trying to get a quick sale, which you don't, you don't want to do that, and you don't tell them that they should give it 90 days, they might think they only need to buy one bottle and they're not to use it again. Well, you, you don't want that. And you don't want to give them that idea because that's not true. So. Great, point. Great point. Beth, um, obviously you've had the longest run of keeping customers ordering and, and having some life for customers. What are things outside of what Nicole and Karen both brought up? Great points. Other things that um, you think are helpful or, and I'll probably come back to you guys on this too, what do you think people are maybe potentially doing wrong? Okay, so being in it about four years, um, in the beginning when I first started, we were always um, putting people on every other month, on bi-monthly, and I think that's one thing that we kind of got away from. So I do have people that are on every other month, and the way I set that up is I tell them, you know, I don't want you to run out of this product, I know you're going to love it. So I'll follow up with you in three weeks to see how you're doing. I'd hate to turn, you know, this option of auto delivery off until we know how you're liking it because you don't want to run out and it'll take, you know, five to six business days to come. So I always try to have them have the first two months so that we focus on Miriam gives back, uh, Nior gives back just for us, right? Because I think our focus has not been on that not lately. So, and then at that point, we'll see how they're running with their product. And if they still have a lot left, then we'll put them on a bi-monthly plan. And that will keep people for years. And I think, you know, that's, it's an important part. Yeah, I mean, it brings back, you know, when I think about when we started too, I mean, that was, a, I, I mean, I'd say 90% of our customers run in every other month. Now, granted, all the procs that we had back in those days were procs that you could run out a month and a half, two months. Night cream, day cream, and firm. Now, the, we have a lot of products that are 30 days, 
you know, whether it's the wellness line or you know, your eye patches are a little bit different that are, you know, you may not have that luxury, but there are some products depending on um, how frequently someone uses them, how many pumps they use. I know I can go through a night cream or a day cream bottle pretty close to two months. I'm mixing a Luma Boost in there too, so I'm only using two or three pumps of that, two or three pumps of a Luma Boost too. So some things do give you a longer runway, which is a good a good point to bring up that you can sometimes go back too early and they just feel like I haven't, I just put a full bottle. And instead of canceling or going, you know what? Let's just set it up for, let's push it off and do it every other month and I'll follow up with you. Because like even Karen was saying, you don't want to run out, but if they haven't really used it as soon as they got it, they weren't consistent with it. There is a, a, a high probability that it's not they don't like it. They just don't need our bowel yet because they're not even a quarter into theirs, right? So I think presenting that as an alternative option or another product, it, you know, certainly can, can, it can make a big difference. Um, and also, also, a lot of people have the false assumption that um, you have to order, if you have an ABO, you have to order the same thing every month. So it's really important to tell them you can switch it in and out. So if you're, you need a night cream every month, but you only need an ice cream or face wash every three months, it's supposed to be last forever, you know, you don't have to get the same thing every month. A lot of people don't know that. Suggesting, yeah, I mean, you, you look at the average customer probably uses one or two of the 14 products available and I would say probably a majority of them don't even know yet what the other products are. So suggesting those other products is powerful. Beth, I think you had another comment you're going to put on there. Yeah, and because of the way we do things now, if you do have someone on bi-monthly, you can offer them in that in-between month something else and say, look, you're going to get 10% off if you want to try something new and you're going to get 10% off your next quarter. Right. Yeah, good point. Double bonus. So. Karen, anything you have you want to throw in there too? What Beth said about the NGB points, I always tell them, because I want those NGB points and I want a big second month order, I really stress the whole having the backup on the shelf. And then I usually say to them, let, let me know when you open your second bottle, because then I'll know about how long it's going to be before you need it. And we can figure out the plan for when you're going to order again. So then I have a, like an idea of, are they in every two months? Are they in every three months? And then I'll figure out what products I'm going to suggest. And like you had asked that, but I'll say to them just in one of those little follow-up texts and, oh, let me tell you about what I've been loving so much lately. And it's always, it might not always be the same thing. It'll be something that I think would be a good fit for them. But I, that's usually how I bring it up. Or if we have a new product, it's easy to bring. Well, I like how you. I like that that way. I saw that when you typed it out, and I was like, "Oh, that's a fun way of bringing it up." Is let me tell you about the my favorite new product that I'm really, you know, whatever, right? That's whatever. Kind of a great way, a, more of a testimonial type of suggestive selling that you're using there. And, and, and I want to go back on the near uh, the near you know, Yora gives back, right? Because those products, a lot of people are using those additional products to have more samples. Some use it for personal use, but some even use it for incentives and rewards. So what things are, you know, without taking too much time, what, what are some things you do to create loyalty to your customer, to your, you know, current, your customers that are, you know, constantly ordering, what are some things that you'll do just to reward them or acknowledge that loyalty and, and keep them locked into you? So I take um, those products that we get back at NGB and um, I make a monthly basket and I add other little trinkets into it. And every time one of my customers order, I enter them into my monthly basket. And the more um, that they order, the more times they get entered. And I think that my customers look forward to that because there's, you know, two, three full size products in it. And I change it up every month. And I just use an app on my phone with the day that they order. I Put them into the app and then at the, the first of every month um my app selects the winner and then i announce it and um i think they really appreciate that awesome karen what do you do anything similar or different i usually raffle off just one product like this month it's eye serum and i start telling them about it at the beginning of the month sometimes i tell them about it in my follow-up emails you know my follow-up texts if i want them to raise I tell them that that's my raffle. I give away a lot of little stuff too, like I, either samples to people of stuff that they haven't tried or eye patches with the big orders, things like that. Just little thank you. I'll write them little thank you cards. I sent a collagen mask to someone because she bought the skincare set and the firm. So I just sent her a collagen mask and said thank you. Um, things like that. I try to just, but I don't necessarily publicize it to everybody that I'm doing it. Yeah. I 
pick and choose who I do it once in a while. And I have a separate group on Facebook. It's like a private group for my customers. So sometimes I'll do a raffle or a giveaway in there where nobody else sees it. It's not for new customers. It's for the existing customers. And they seem to like that. Awesome. That's a good people feature. Beth and yourself? Um, I generally I have uh, customers who have been with me a couple of years or more. I'll send them, if they have a new product that comes out, I'll send them one of the new products. Just so awesome. thank you. Nice and, can I, <coughs> you talk about writing letters. I, I mean, that's something that Sam's done, you know, over five years is every once in a while just writing a hand, uh, handwritten letter or card to them. And, you know, it's always, you get one of those, it's tough to decide, hey, I'm not going to order anymore. I think just showing, acknowledging their loyalty, thanking them for their support, all that stuff goes a long way. So spending a little bit of time doing that I think is huge. Um, real quick, um, you know, so many of us, um, before we became a brand partner, really just came to get the products, right? And then maybe we're like, God, we want to get these products for free. And they eventually became brand partners. And then, you know, the journey began. So um, when and how do you um, I present that opportunity? And, and Beth, I'll let you start off on that one. Okay. Um, because I texted you today, she sent me a message. And um, I usually I call up with people that she sent me a message that I use the products and I, and I, people were noticing my skin, and I really love the shoes. And I said, "That's awesome." I said, "Whatever you, you know, based on what you try, what are you thinking? You'd like to try to order this one?" And she said, "Well, I'll know more when I get back from my vacation how what I like, you know, what my funds are." And I said, "Great." I said, "So you'll get 10% off since you ordered something last month, but if you're, you know, if you're wanting to get the products free, we need to talk about that." So I always bring it up in the beginning, like. After they've tried something for them, you know. Awesome. <laughs> Karen, how about yourself? Um, I will usually from the very beginning too. I let them know either that my story was about how I found Neuro is because I wanted to get them for free. Um, so I just put that seed in there. Or when people ask me pricing, um, I usually tell them the retail price is whatever. When you order it from me, you get it for whatever. Um, or I can tell you how to get them for free. And then sometimes they bite on that and they ask me, or sometimes they're just like, ah, I'm not going to do that. And I'm like, yeah, I'll talk to you in a few more months. And then I'll hit them up again if they're a regular customer about, and like, you, you know. And you've seen, even though they've said no once before, that maybe later down the road that that decision may change. That's everybody says no, and then they do it. Well, not, and not everybody follows up and does it, but everybody, I told my upline no for a good six months before I did anything. And I remember that. I remember so your, I'm, your I'm partner biggest, story. Yeah, I'm like, no means not now, and I'm your biggest testimony of that myself. I think that's a huge point to bring up, though. It's not that, you know, don't let the first person will be the last no, right? Just the times change for people, perspective change, all that stuff. So, for you know, professionally be persistent and you know, offer it every so often. I think is a really good point. I'm glad it came out. Nicole, um, ending with you, um, anything unique or, or something that has been mentioned that you do to present that opportunity at a certain point with a customer. When I see people sharing their own result photos or, you know, referring their friends to me, that's when I approach them and I'm like, um, you're already doing it. Why not get your product for free? You know? And then um, if a customer consecutively orders, you know, two, three hundred, four hundred dollars worth of stuff, then I contact them and I'm like, hey, you know, you're getting all this every month and this is how much you're spending. You could be getting it for free. Love it. Love it. All right. Well, listen, that's the questions we wanted to get to. I appreciate you guys all obviously taking the time to share your tips, your secrets, the things that help you guys have just a healthy customer base month after month after month, which is so important because we have incredible products. And if we set the right expectations and allow people to use them for a period of time, they're going to love it. Right. But it's all about setting it up properly in the correct way and following up in the proper manner and then you're going to have customers like you guys have our uh, you know all have our lifers you'll just continue to order over and over and over again because they really got to use the product long enough to fall in love with it and see those results and not only is it a very joyous happy thing to see as a brand partner 
but it also changes your check, right? Also changes the money that you're making on a monthly basis and, you know, and the free proxy you're earning that you can reinvest into your business and reinvest into your so many positive things. I really appreciate you guys all taking the time um, this evening to share those tips with others. And for those watching, I hope hopefully you got as much as I did just hearing these girls that you can go back and start applying these different things so you can also have a great customer base month after month, earning you a lot of extra money and making people very happy with the results they're getting. And, and some of them, you know, will be turning into people on your team too. So on that note, thank you so much, everybody. Um, thanks for watching. Ladies, I thank you, can thank you, thank you guys enough for, uh, for you taking the time. So good night, everybody. How good is he? Isn't he fantastic? I hope everyone took some really great notes from that. Um, what is awesome, what is really awesome as well is that I actually have um, the questionnaire that he originally asked those ladies. Um, so I have it in a PDF. I'll give that to all of the leaders in this group that come along. So you can make sure that you put it out into your teams uh, because, um, you know, sometimes people just get stuck with that verbiage and, and it's nice to be able to go, oh, look, that, there it is right there for you guys to actually just copy it and um, make it your own. So in on that note, um, it's already 30 minutes, our time together. Um, incredible training tonight, guys. It is, I can see people writing in the chat right now. It was really good value. Um, have an incredible week this week. Go out, be amazing. Can't wait to see everybody on the uh, Queensland coast. I'll be heading that way tomorrow. Um, have an incredible day, everyone, and we will see you next week.